morning, welcome back to the channel. Uh, this afternoon I'm going to carry on working on the MGTF 135. This is my track day car that um, overheated fairly severely and if you've seen the previous videos you'll have seen it go bang. This is the third video in the engine strip down and if you've seen the previous two you'll know that the head has been removed from the car and the valves removed from the head. I've been looking at the replacement head gasket options and have found out that the choice will depend upon the height of the cylinder wet liners. The top of the liners should be three one thousandths of an inch above the block. If they are then the MLS gasket can be used, if they are not then this gasket may not seal and the elastomer type gasket is the better choice. If the liners have sunk below the top of the block then there is a risk that no gasket will seal properly and any repair may only last a short time. The other important thing I've learnt is that serious overheating can expand the liners into the head leaving score marks. So the good news is that the liners are fine and the engine is worth rebuilding. So I think the next question is given the general state of a car that is over 18 years old there's rust, uh, dirt, there's oil everywhere. Um, does this turn into a full strip down project? Can I get this subframe out? So part of the decision as to whether to take the subframe out or not is whether I can do it safely. So before I make that decision, I'm gonna do a test lift of the car and I'm gonna see if I can safely get the back of the car off the ground far enough to get that subframe out. If I can't do that, it's a non-starter. If I can, then I've got some serious thinking to do and um, potentially a very interesting project. So I'm gonna go and get sorted out on that and I'll be, um, I'm going to do a few things off camera and then I'll be back. I've replaced the two engine mount bolts and put the wheel back on. So let's see how far off the ground I can get this thing. That's a good start, but I have to bear in mind that this is a rear wheel drive car, so the front wheels are not going to be locked by the gearbox. So uh, I don't want this rolling forward when I take the rear wheels off the ground, so uh, I've got to come up with something to lock the front wheels in place before I do anything else. Okay, I think all being well, this should work. So actually this is pretty high and um, I think it's probably high enough to get the engine and the subframe out. Um, the downside is that I've actually had to use the subframe as jacking points to get it up this high which kind of defeats the object of the exercise. Um, looking at what other people do, they unbolt the subframe whilst the car's on the ground and just lift the body off it. So I need to have a little bit of a rethink and work out a way to do that. That gives you an idea of the condition of the engine mount so uh, I have a suspicion it's going to be a bit of a fight getting those bolts out. So apparently these bolts are made of chocolate so um, they've got a bit of a reputation for snapping when people are trying to remove them. I could do without having to drill out bolts and retap threads so I'm just going to take it slowly, plenty of duck oil, maybe some heat if necessary. Uh, even if it takes a few days it's preferable to having to do lots of remedial work afterwards. <laughs>
that one was surprisingly easy. Um, I can't, I'm quite gobsmacked that after 18 years, it's, um, it moves as easily as that. To be honest, that's not too much of a surprise. It's kind of how I expected this job to go. Not sure why there's only three bolts on each side. Maybe somebody's been at this before. But, um... Yeah, let's see if we can get those loosened off. Okay, as far as I know, that's all the bolts for the offside loosened off now. Best job done, only two breakages which I can deal with once the subframe's out of the way. Uh, all those other bolts, they should come out really quite easily once the car's back on the ground and I'm ready to actually lift it properly. This, by the way, is what track days do to your tyres. There's almost no head left on this one, nothing for the screwdriver to grip to, so um, I'm afraid it's got to be the mole grips. Uh, and these do the job very well. I guess some nice new stainless ones in there when this goes back together. I change to the order of doing things but I don't think I'm too far up in there to take the subframe out. Uh, need to disconnect the clutch hydraulics, brake hydraulics and there'll be some wiring to the engine I expect but I can't think of much else that needs to be done. I'll probably find one or two things as I get closer to uh, being ready to actually lift the car off the frame but really don't think I'm too far off now so uh, get quite exciting. One more thing I just thought of, handbrake. This pin should be easy to pull out. Okay, so that pin's well and truly stuck in place. Um, so I'll put some duck oil on it, I'll leave it overnight and hopefully tomorrow it will come out quite easily. That one was easier.
Hoping this will do the job. Two engine cranes and two straps. Each strap will take a ton. Each engine crane will take a ton. And the car itself only weighs 1.4 tons. And um, about a third of the weight would be on the front wheels anyway. Okay, now I'm gonna have another look at the handbrake cable pin and see if I can remove it. Now it's been uh, soaked in duck oil for a few days. That worked well. It was actually a bicycle chain remover I used to push that pin through and it worked a treat. I think now that pin is out, the next job will be the gear shift cables. Then we just have to lift that up and out it comes. Maybe ever so slightly fiddly, but apart from that, not too bad at all. Right, so Saturday the 4th of September and all been well, today is the day the subframe comes out. Uh, I've had a little bit of a look around the engine bay last night, found a few things that need to be um, removed, disconnected, what have you, uh, but really, really close to being able to do the job and uh, hopefully I don't end up with a car crashed on the ground, totally destroyed. Hopefully this will go smoothly, fingers crossed. Right, looking at this, I think that everything now needs to be done from the top. Uh, it doesn't look as though there is actually anything else to do from underneath. So uh, I'm going to drop it down on its wheels and uh, see how I get on then. That didn't take long, we're back on the ground now. Let's have a look inside the engine bay and see what's left. These aren't actually attached to the engine, but I'm gonna take them out anyway, um, just to get them out of the way so they don't snag on anything when the body's been lifted. Next job is to sort this mess, work out what stays on the car and what comes off with the engine and subframe. Straight away, I can see down there that we have the high tension cable to the starter motor. Along the back of the engine bay down there, there's some wiring bolted to the body so um, I think that's providing, there's an engine earth down there and uh, we've got the main fuse. So um, they will need to be disconnected as well. So I say, I think that one was a crankshaft position sensor. And then just down here, these two wires bolt onto the block just under there and they're um, obviously providing an earth. Nice and easy, that's a 13 millimeter bolt. So, by luck, the first socket I picked up. I think what I might do is just go and get a nut, put a nut on that bolt, and then that will keep everything together. So that's just an M10 bolt. Those go to the starter motor solenoid, as does that. So I think they should be quite easy to take off. HT cable from the battery is held on with a 13 millimeter nut. And then that one is just a spade connection. Not too sure what that is. Um, possibly a speed sensor as it's in the gearbox, or um, maybe it's just quite simply the reversing lights switch. Uh, don't know, 
have to try and remember to look that up and find out what it is. Going back to what I was saying earlier, this looks more like the reversing light switch to be honest. Just two wires. Well as far as I can see, I've got the wires to the alternator to remove and then the hydraulics for the clutch and then I think that is it, I'm getting closer and closer. The alternator nut was 13 millimeters as well. Okay. Well, that's extremely annoying. I'm gonna to have to jack the car to get to those. So we can see this is the loom that comes round from the back of the engine. So there's one bolt there, one bolt there to take off. So we've just got uh, two oil sensors there to disconnect. Uh, one is gonna be the oil pressure sensor and one is the oil temperature sensor. It looks like there's a flexible pipe connected to the clutch sleeve cylinder so rather than disconnect the hydraulics I'm going to just remove the sleeve cylinder leaving it connected to the flexible pipe and just drop it down underneath the car. Off camera, I'm just gonna tie back hoses and wires just so they don't get in the way when I'm lifting the body off. The axle stand will stop the subframe from tipping forward and a very Heath Robinson brick and piece of wood will stop it from tipping backwards. Okay, it's Sunday morning. Yesterday I thought I would get the subframe out, didn't happen. Uh, took me longer to find and disconnect everything than I thought. So uh, today's the day. All I've got to do now is just undo those bolts underneath the car and then I should be able to separate the body from the chassis. Okay. Here we go, eight bolts removed. Theoretically now, the body is totally separate from the subframe. Um, let's see what happens. It might just lift straight off. It might all come crashing on the ground or it might actually still be attached somehow. Never done this before. So let's see how it goes. Right. Um, we have lift and we have separation. One wire, 
down here. Okay, look at that, I missed one wire. Looks like it's a wheel speed sensor. Apart from that, I can't see anything else that is attaching the engine and subframe to the body. So overall, I think that's pretty good. Stopping that from dropping. I don't get it. Why won't it go down? Oh. Yes, we're in gear, damn. <laughs> oh dear. Right, that wasn't very clever. Okay, so this wasn't very clever. So I had it probably in reverse, but definitely in gear for safety whilst up on the ramps. And I didn't put it in neutral. So at the moment, I can't wheel this out because it's gonna turn the pistons, which is a pain and I haven't locked the liners down yet so um, yeah that's a pain right so what I'm gonna have to do is put my um, wheelie things I don't know what they're called I'm gonna have to put my wheelie things under the subframe under the wheels right Well, that wasn't bad, apart from being a bit of a muffet and forgetting to put the thing into neutral, which uh, obviously made it that bit more difficult to move the subframe, but uh, nothing the right tools can't sort out and uh, hopefully lesson learnt for somebody else. Um, yeah, right, what can I say, we're there. <laughs> <laughs>